This story is by Dragon of Blue Fire. This story is called The Mansion on Ash Street. Seven-year-old Sally Thompson was very excited the day she and her father moved out of their tiny apartment and into the old mansion on Ash Street. Her father was an architect and he intended to fix the place up and resell it. There were rumors of the old place being haunted, but he didn't believe in silly things like ghosts. Sally had lived in the tiny apartment since she was born, so she was amazed by the size of the old mansion. Which room is mine, Daddy? She asked as her head turned to one side, then another. Her father laughed warmly as he carried in a heavy box. Anyone you want, take a look around and find one you like, he told her. Sally eagerly ran off into the depths of the mansion to find her room. That night Sally was lying in bed relaxing and waiting to fall asleep. Her large window was open and letting in a pleasant breeze. Just as Sally was about to fall asleep, she heard a voice. Get out! She sat up straight in bed and looked around but saw no one. Then she heard a hoarse whisper right next to her ear. Or join us. Sally let out a terrified scream and shouted for her father. Her father ran in, turned on the light and asked, Sally, what's wrong? Sally told her father what she'd heard. Her father sat down on the bed and hugged his daughter. Oh, Sally, you're just nervous because it's your first night in your new room. The moaning was just this old house, settling like old houses do. And the whispering was just the wind. The words were only in your imagination, he assured her. He was so sure that Sally believed him and calmed down. Her father kissed her goodnight, tucked her back in, turned off the light, and went back to bed. Sally lay back on her pillow and shut her eyes. A few minutes passed with no noises and Sally started to fall asleep. Then she heard the moan again. Get out! Sally didn't even open her eyes. It's just the house settling. I won't let my imagination trick me again, Sally thought to herself. Or join us came the whisper. She could feel cold air move on her ear. Sally got nervous and opened her eyes. Standing next to her was the ghost of a little girl. Across the room was the ghost of an old man. Get out! He moaned louder. Or join us! The little girl whispered. Sally screamed and called her father again. The ghost disappeared. Sally's father turned the knob. Sally was crying and shivering in fear as she told her father what she saw. It was just a nightmare, Sally, he told her. This time Sally refused to calm down. Can I sleep with you tonight? she asked. Her father sighed. All right, but you must promise me you'll sleep in your own bed tomorrow night. Sally promised and her father carried her into the room. The next night, Sally's father tucked her into bed and kissed her goodnight. It was only a few minutes before Sally screamed and called him again. I cannot keep doing this, he said to himself. I know, tonight I will leave her alone. When she wakes up in the morning, she will see that there was nothing to be afraid of. So he let Sally call. The cries grew softer and weaker, then stopped completely. Her father smiled back to sleep. In the morning, he went to wake up Sally for breakfast. She was lying in her bed with a blanket drawn up to her chin. Sally, wake up, sleepyhead, her father said cheerfully. Sally didn't stir, so he took the blanket and pulled it off. Then it was his turn to scream. Sally's neck was covered in bruises. She had been strangled to death. Ho, 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 ho.